Let's say you and I were sitting down to eat a giant bowl of ice cream. Well, 675 calories worth of ice cream to be exact if we want to pay attention to this PLOS1 study. But anyway, you're going to eat your ice cream in 30 minutes and I'm going to eat my ice cream in five minutes. Okay, I think it'd be pretty straightforward to tell who's going to have a bigger glucose spike and a worse insulin response, right? The person that's eating it in five minutes because it's skyrocketing everything really fast. But if you ever stop and ask yourself the question why, it actually illuminates this interesting thing. You see, we have what are called incretin potentiators. Now these are literal gut hormones that come into play in effect of how we eat our food, different foods that we eat. So the purpose of this video is to give you a few things that you can add into your diet, both tangible things as well as pragmatic tips and ways of eating that can make a dramatic improvement in what happens with that glucose spike and subsequent insulin response, making it potentially better for building insulin sensitivity and maybe even modulating insulin resistance. So let's go ahead and jump in. It's fascinating stuff. So the main thing we want to talk about today is something called glucagon-like peptide 1. Now I'm not going to make this video super, super biochemical, okay? It's not fun for anybody and just bores people. But anyway, if we get to the basics of it, glucagon-like peptide 1 is a gut hormone that does modulate A, how we absorb fuels, and B, the feedback loop between like our glucose response and overall satiety and everything. So it's a very important hormone. When we eat slow, this glucagon-like peptide level increases, which is why it's able to control the glucose and insulin response much better than if we just bombard 675 calories worth of ice cream in one really quick five minute setting. So the first thing I actually wanna talk about, and we will get into the ice cream in a second, is actually utilizing berries more. Okay, berries have a powerful effect indirectly and directly on glucagon-like peptide one levels. So it's crazy because we used to think fruit was like bad because it had carbs in it and sugar in it. But the reality is berries, specifically like strawberries and raspberries, have an effect on glucagon-like peptide one. There was a study published in the British Journal of Nutrition, took a look at subjects that consumed 35 grams of sugar from a berry puree. They mashed up a bunch of berries. And then people that consumed 35 grams of sugar from other sources. Guess what? The berries, same amount of carbs and sugar, ended up having a significantly less glucose spike and a lesser insulin concentration to deal with it. Okay, well, what's going on here? Well, when they look mechanistically, they see, oh, well, there were increased levels of glucagon-like peptide 1. So it was able to control that glucose spike from a gut sort of hormone response. This is very, very interesting. And specific berries, like, again, raspberries and strawberries, also contain tannins, which can slow down carbohydrate absorption from other carbs that are taken in cons uh, conjunction with the berries. So that's really fascinating. Now I'm gonna jump over to something else for a second. Okay, a different category. If we know that glucagon-like peptide one is a good thing, then we never really want it to go away, right? Like if glucagon-like peptide one keeps you satiated, then man, I don't really want those levels to go down. Well, cool thing is seaweed is kind of interesting because seaweed seems to block the breakdown of glucagon-like peptide 1. So there was a study that was published in the Journal of Food Science that demonstrated that seaweed seems to have these really small peptides, and these peptides affect this thing, it's called DPPIB. Now DPPIB is what's responsible for breaking down glucagon-like peptide 1. So GLP-1 increases, and then the DPPIB comes in and breaks it down. Seaweed has particles in it that actually slow the breakdown. So GLP-1, the thing that makes you satiated and modulates glucose, stays elevated longer. So we can activate it upon different pathways. Seaweed alongside carbs might make it so that you get that beneficial effect of glucagon-like peptide 1 on those carbs for a longer period of time. Then we start going down a different rabbit hole. I talk about chia seeds, I talk about flax seeds and how they're beneficial when it comes down from a fiber perspective, but fiber is also very impactful at affecting PYY, peptide YY, and glucagon-like peptide 1. Not just because it's fiber and because it's digestively going to break down slow, but because of the impact that it has on our microbiome in the first place. I think people forget how much the microbiome and how we fuel the microbiome, not just what's existing, but how we fuel it, can impact how we oxidize glucose. 
Okay, if we have more signaling that's happening from the microbiome and ultimately from the downstream effects of short chain fatty acids, we can directly impact, or indirectly impact, I guess is the proper way, how our cells utilize glucose. So a diverse microbiome that is created by eating large amounts or at least modest amounts of fiber seems to be very powerful. Now, I was recently at a metabolic health conference, and it's funny because I've noticed that the agenda, so to speak, has shifted much more from, hey, reduce carbs, reduce carbs, reduce carbs, to increase protein, increase fiber, increase protein, increase fiber. And it's something that I've been really trying to preach for quite a while. It's very important that we get these soluble fibers in to affect GLP-1 and PYY, peptide YY. Uh, I did put a link down below because people ask all the time, okay, where do probiotics come into play? I do not, I will go on record, I will say do not think that probiotics are absolutely required. I think that a diverse diet is the most important, okay? But it's hard for people to get that diversity in their diet, and that is where I think probiotics can definitely play a part. The problem is a lot of them are garbage. I put a link down below for literally the only one that I will use now. It's called Seed, and it is a daily symbiotic. It has a prebiotic and a probiotic. Really cool technology with a capsule inside of a capsule. The link down below will save you 15% off. So you're gonna use that code THOMAS down below, using code THOMAS15 for 15% off. They're paving the way with a lot of microbiome research too, which I just respect immensely. So that link down below in the description. Okay, now we need to connect some other dots here. Remember that whole ice cream study I talked about? Well, I wanna be able to explain it in more detail. So it was published in PLOS 1, two groups. One group ate 675 calories worth of ice cream in five minutes, another group ate it in 30 minutes. We already know the result, but what they saw here was that not only glucose and insulin were better responded to, but there was also more glucagon-like peptide 1 overall for the group that ate it in 30 minutes. So it allowed time for that glucagon-like peptide to increase. So this is really, really important, but then we kind of have to factor in another piece of the equation. Having protein first might be really like one of the easiest things you can do. If you have a plate of food in front of you, okay, and you have some chicken, you have some rice, you have some vegetables, you have some butter, the order in which you eat that food is enough to make a huge difference, okay? So I've got two different studies I wanna break down here, talking about the order of food and how it affects these hormones in the gut. First one was also published in PLOS1. It took a look at eating a ham sandwich. Okay, so ham sandwich plus water didn't really affect the glucose or insulin response. Ham sandwich, but having a whey protein shake right before it instead of water, attenuated the glucose response and affected glucose concentration immensely. Okay, pretty powerful effect. They also found that glucagon-like peptide one was quite a bit higher after the whey protein shake. Doesn't mean you have to have whey. The point is protein first starts to get the body to excrete more of this GLP-1, which directly impacts later on how the carbs are affected. So eat the protein, GLP-1 goes up, then you eat the carbs and the body slows down the absorption of the carbohydrates. But if that's not enough for you, there was a study that's published in the journal Diabetes Care, probably literally my favorite study as of right now. Okay, this study took a look at subjects that had a plate of food in front of them, ciabatta bread, some orange juice, some chicken, some veggies, and veggies had butter on it. Okay, they gave them uh, two different categories. One, you eat the orange juice and the uh, ciabatta red first, and then kind of go around and then eat the protein and everything else. Okay, that group was one thing. The next group ate the chicken first and then the carbohydrates, the orange juice and the ciabatta bread and everything else. That group had a 36% reduction in glucose 60 minutes after consumption. 36%, okay? That's crazy. And they also saw that it attenuated, it slowed down and delayed the overall effect of the glucose spike altogether. So 36% less spike, same exact meal, just the order in which they were eating it. Now, a lot of this may have to do with the glucagon-like peptide one, but it also simply has to do with the protein's effect on carbohydrate absorption in the first place. Not to mention, if you looked more detail, you'd probably see that if they ate the protein first, they'd probably end up eventually eating less of the carbohydrates and less of the other stuff. Protein has less caloric density than fat. Eat the protein first, eat the fats last so that you don't overdo the fats and stack up your calories. I'd rather you leave a little bit of butter on the table or on the plate than leave a little bit of chicken on the plate, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, implement these things, and I think you'll see quite a big difference, especially when it comes down to the fiber piece and especially when it comes down to how quickly you eat your food piece. I'll see you tomorrow.